Hey, what's up, everyone? Raging Old Negro here, having way too much fun as always. And today, I just want to talk about how to maintain your independence if you want to make your own. Because you guys have heard this for a while, right? Every time you don't like the way something's done, you always got the people that invaded it when it was good and ruined it. And then when you're complaining that like you guys need to stop ruining this shit and get it back to what it was, they're there saying, like, oh, pfft, we run this now. If you don't like it, you can make your own. And then we've had a few instances where people made their own and then that was taken over too. So how do you make yourself immune to being completely subverted and co-opted like that? There's actually a lot of things you need to consider. So as you're working, uh, or the first thing you need to do is, uh, if you can, work on building your own everything, if you can. Some things are kind of impossible, like we can't make our own internet. But if you team up with the right people, you may be able to have your own uh, little pieces of infrastructure that's close enough. But yes, for the things you can, make your own. Make sure you own everything. That, that's what Rockefeller did, and one of the reasons he was so successful is uh, you know, if he needed uh, some supply for his factories, he went and he bought out whoever, uh, whoever mined up the raw materials. Uh, he mined up the raw materials, the processing of the raw materials, the turning them into the specific supplies he need. He made sure he owned the entire supply chain, and nobody could fuck with him then. He is completely self-sufficient. We all need to be striving for that because in this age of cancel culture, the biggest fear a lot of us have is uh, some of these lunatics crying to someone that we rely on somewhere on the chain and them just pulling the rug out from under us. So if you can, you need to own everything. And uh, I know it's not reasonable unless you're a millionaire or a billionaire. So you're going to have to find people to work with and be very selective of who those people are. In my opinion, it's actually worth paying more money to team up with someone that you know is going to have your back than to get somebody who they'll, they'll just drop you without even verifying if the claims against you are true just to avoid the PR disaster. Now, you just got to keep these things in your mind all the time. But uh, once you're getting established, here's the next thing to, to worry about. Never accept investors. There's no such thing as free money. There's no such thing as no strings attached money. Now, a lot of these investors, they're pretty upfront that, oh, I'm going to inject uh, this massive amount of money into your company, but I'm going to be calling the shots. I run the company. Sometimes they're a lot more sneaky with that, actually. I was talking to a guy before. I knew, I knew a guy who uh, him and one of his friends owned a bar and they accepted a pretty big investment from a from an, a third party and within a year they lost the business because he pulled some legal loopholes and took over the company and took it away from them uh, i i don't know what legal loopholes he pulled but you know he was rich obviously you know being an investor he had the money to hire the lawyers and uh, yeah, they were able to steal the company away from the rightful owners because, I, I mean, I guess he was able to say since he's the one supplying all the money, it's really his company and the courts agreed with him. So yeah, there's no such thing as free money, no strings attached money. Do not take money from investors unless you're willing to accept that you may not have that company for a while. Next up, along the same vein, don't go public. Don't accept shareholders because uh, a lot of people don't understand what going public is. So uh, when you go public, the shareholders own the company, not you. You can technically hold 51% of the shares and then you get to decide who's on the board of directors. So if they're making decisions you don't like, you can you, you get to choose. You could replace him however you see fit. And I used to think that was good enough. Like, oh, yeah, go public, keep 51%, and you'll be fine. But no, there's even laws in place now that minority stakeholders, shareholders, can still sue you and win if they believe that you're not acting in their best interests. Because once you have shareholders, once you're a publicly traded corporation, you exist solely to make money for the shareholders. And even if you are the majority shareholder, the minority shareholders can still sue you and win 
if they believe you're not acting in their best interests. And uh, that's not that's not even counting the worst that could happen, which would be that uh, you don't maintain a majority share. And then uh, Steve Jobs, best example of that. Him and Steve Wozniak, they started Apple. They went public. And then Steve Jobs was kicked out of his own fucking company because guess what? It's not his company anymore. The shareholders own the fucking company. They could do whatever they want. You sold out to the shareholders. It's now their company. Now, uh, of course, he did. they did practically beg him to come back and save their asses years later. But the point remains, as soon as you uh, go public, it's not your company anymore. It's now the shareholders' company. You're no longer calling the shots. And this is, uh, you guys know the term hostile takeover, right? A public corporation is, is pretty much the only thing this can happen to the way it happens now. Because a hostile takeover is uh, like what's happening to Twitter. You got a, a conservative activist bought so many shares of Twitter that he effectively runs the show right now. He doesn't have majority stake, but he has so many votes now that he is a very big voting block and can heavily influence what Twitter does. If you don't want that happening to your company, if you don't want outsiders forcing their way in and forcing you out completely legally, mind you, you can't go public. Just, you're just going to have to make do with the money you get from your customers. You remember when that used to be a thing? where business was just the business owner providing things for customers and the customers gave them money and that's all there was to it. That's how you got to run things. And the final one, this is one I don't think I've talked about before. So that definitely pay attention here. The final one is government. Now I've heard people saying like, Oh, what if the government implements diversity quotas? What are you going to do about that? Easy. The government can't, le at least in the U.S., they can't force diversity quotas on companies. But what they can do is withhold like, grants and benefits and uh, tax rebates and shit like that to companies that uh, don't have these quotas. Th that's what they do. So a lot of, uh, a lot of states in the U.S. and uh, on the federal level as well, depending on what field you're in, your company could qualify for a lot of like tax cuts, tax rebates, grants, federal money. It's basically the government's giving you money for nothing, you know, you know just, just like for existing. But that is what they withhold from you to force those quotas on you, for example. If you don't rely on them in the first place, you don't give a shit, do you? Because imagine if you were one of those companies and you never took those rebates, you never took those uh, those tax cuts or anything anyway, and then the government shows up like, you know, we realize that uh, you don't have enough diversity in your company. Either you fix that or, or what, bitch? We don't take anything from you. You can turn the fuck around and walk away. Now, I'm not going to say... If you don't, I mean, if you qualify for some of these grants and free money, quote unquote, you can take it. And and I know what you're thinking too. Oh, that flies in the face of what you just said. No, no, no. Hear me out. If you qualify for these cuts for this so-called free money, take it, but and then put it straight into savings. Never make it so you rely on that money. Tell your accountant count this money as an added bonus. And make sure we never drop so far that we have to start relying on it. Because then while you qualify for this stuff, you can just keep taking the money and storing it away. And then the government shows up and says, oh, either you do what we say or we're going to cut you off. You just say, OK, bye bye. And then uh, if you and then you can start reaching into that stash you've been building up if you need it. But ideally, you don't need it. It's extra. It's not something you relied on. If you can manage that, if you can manage everything I've just been saying, you're going to be pretty much immune to almost everything. And although I will say I'm not a lawyer, so there's always going to be some loopholes or something that they can do most likely. So obviously clear all this with your lawyers first.
And second off, this advice really only applies for the U.S. Because I know there's other countries in the world like Airstrip One where they could just charge you with hate speech or something and have you arrested. Like, oh, you're not just you're not going to implement more diversity in your company. We're just going to arrest you then. But in the U.S., at least right now, it, that doesn't happen. So there are ways you can get away with it. The government can't tell you how you're going to run your company. They can only withhold money from you if you refuse to do what they say. So if you never take money from them anyway, or you never become dependent on it, you could just tell them to go fuck themselves. And how awesome would that be? You could tell everyone who's trying to infiltrate and subvert your business to go fuck off while you just roll in the dough, giving the customers what they want. That's what Sick Fox exists for, to make the fans happy. Everybody wins. No middlemen. Just us and you. You give us shekels. We give you a product you actually want. And it's in our best interest to keep giving you more of what you want. So we keep getting more shekels. And there's no middlemen skimming off the top. There's no middlemen dictating what we're going to do. Only the customers, man. No focus groups or any of that shit. And that's how it should be. And I firmly believe the next generation of entrepreneurs, they're going to be doing things exactly like this because they see how it goes. I would never, for example, launch a publicly traded company unless I was only doing it to sell it. There are people who do that, by the way. They start businesses with the intent of selling it and making a huge profit. Uh, different story there. So obviously, if that's what you're doing, just don't listen to anything I said. My advice was for if you plan on actually keeping your company around for a while and keeping full control over it and keeping it profitable. That's all I got to say, guys. Thanks for listening. Oh man, I am so excited to tell you guys right now that finally, after about a year of build-up and shilling, we have launched Blade Devil on Indiegogo, and so far it is doing so well thanks to awesome people like you. If you haven't backed it yet, then please check the links in the description and check out Blade Devil on Indiegogo. You will not be disappointed. Looking forward to seeing you there.